Tuberculosis is an extremely dangerous and highly contagious disease that has reached epidemic proportions in some parts of the world. Despite the importance of effectively and quickly diagnosing it and other mycobacterial diseases, many of the laboratory techniques that are employed for diagnosis are notoriously challenging and ineffective. The first-line diagnostic examination of sputum is unreliable at best, identifying only 60% of active tuberculosis infections. To confirm the rapid but unreliable microscopic results, traditional culture-based techniques must be used. Unfortunately, these methods can take weeks to produce results. To speed these results, automated detection systems and molecular diagnostic technology has been developed. While this technology significantly accelerates detection, the samples used for these diagnostics must be prepared with extreme care to achieve reliable results. While it is sometimes overlooked, the pre-analytical specimen preparation process often compounds the problems associated with AFB diagnostics. As it has been traditionally performed, the digestion and decontamination process used to remove contaminant bacteria is inherently flawed. Prior to diagnostics, sputum samples must be treated with a strong base to remove contaminant bacteria. This base will kill off contaminant bacteria prior to harming mycobacteria. But after a brief period of decontamination, this base must be neutralized or any mycobacteria in the sample will begin to rapidly die off. One of the critical flaws in the traditional specimen preparation process is the fact that this neutralization has traditionally been attempted using M15 phosphate buffer, saline, or water. This buffer is completely unable to neutralize the basic decontaminant. This leaves the sample well above the toxic level for mycobacteria and dramatically reduces the number of viable mycobacteria available for diagnostics. To further compound the problem, laboratories have traditionally used this same M15 phosphate buffer saline or water to resuspend their sample after centrifugation. This leaves the sample with a final, highly variable pH that can lead to further organism die-off and may cause false positive results in sensitive automated detection equipment. AlphaTech systems recognized these problems with traditional specimen preparation methodologies and developed a complete set of reagents that overcome them. Using the procedure shown in this presentation with the reagents provided by the NACPAC EA3, your laboratory can maximize mycobacteria recovery, remove the risk of cross-contamination, and generate reproducible sample characteristics time after time. This will result in the most sensitive preclinical specimen preparation for mycobacteria available. It is important before processing respiratory specimens for AFB that all the necessary equipment, reagents, and supplies required to perform the procedure are ready for use and easily accessible. This ensures that the processing will be carried out properly and efficiently while protecting both the patient specimen and the laboratory technologist. Be sure that the proper volumes of reagents are available for the number of specimens being processed. Also, check that the reagents have not exceeded their expiration dates and are not showing turbidity, precipitates, or other abnormalities. It is important that you allow reagents that were stored at refrigeration temperatures to reach room temperature prior to use. Line up the specimens in the biosafety hood, making sure to only process the samples that will fit in one centrifuge load. Open only one sample at a time, removing one specimen cap, adding the appropriate reagents, and recapping the specimen vial. This will avoid the cross-contamination caused by placing the wrong cap on a specimen vial. Open a bottle of the NACPAC Red TB-based solution. Then. Carefully break off the top of the ampule of NALC powder labeled A and add the contents of this ampule to the bottle containing the NACPAC red solution. Cap the bottle and thoroughly mix the solution by inversion. 
Dispose of the ampule. Any residual NALC powder contained in the ampule can be disposed of without rinsing. Using a sterile, disposable pipette, add NAC pack red base digestant to each patient's specimen. For specimens that are 1 to 5 milliliters in size, add a volume equal to that of the specimen volume. For specimens that are 6 to 7 milliliters, add only 5 milliliters. If you receive a large specimen, between 8 to 10 milliliters in volume, add an equal volume of NAC pack red and split the sample evenly into two 50 milliliter centrifuge tubes after the decontamination period. The volume of sample and digestant must be measured precisely to ensure proper neutralization. Tighten the caps on the centrifuge tubes and vortex each specimen for 30 seconds. Allow each specimen to decontaminate for 15 minutes at room temperature. Revortex the specimen approximately every 5 minutes during the decontamination procedure. This will resuspend the bacteria and cells in the sodium hydroxide solution. Following the 15 to 20 minute decontamination period, add NPC67 AFB neutralization buffer to each sample until the solution changes from pink to colorless. This color change indicates that the sample pH is below 8.1, the critical pH at which mycobacteria are no longer in danger of die-off. Once the sample has turned colorless, do not add any more neutralization buffer in order to preserve the proper pH. Use one bottle of neutralization buffer per sample, discarding any buffer that remains in each bottle to avoid cross-contamination. Centrifuge the specimen tubes at 3000 XG for at least 15 minutes. 3000 XG is not typically equivalent to 3000 RPM. You should use a nomograph or refer to the centrifuge owner's manual to determine what RPM is required to reach 3000 XG. After centrifugation, return the samples to the biosafety hood. Carefully decant all of the supernatant into a splash-proof container holding a proper disinfectant. Be sure to decant dry, as residual supernatant can negatively affect the sample pH. Wipe the lip of the tube with an appropriate disinfectant to prevent contamination. When decanting, be careful not to loosen the pellet. Using a sterile, disposable pipette, resuspend the pellet with 0.5 milliliter of pellet resuspension buffer and mix by gentle aspiration and discharge. Draw up a small amount of the mixed pellet into the pipette and place a drop onto a pair of clean cell bond adhesive slides to prepare for AFB staining. By adding only 0.5 milliliters of pellet resuspension buffer, the sensitivity of the AFB smear will be increased. The adhesive slide is important to hold the smear material onto the slide. Since the bovine albumin fraction 5 reagent is not used in this procedure, the adhesive will also keep it from peeling off the slide during the staining procedure. Using the same pipette, add an additional 1 to 2 milliliters of the pellet resuspension buffer from the same vial and inoculate all other TB media and rapid detection equipment. This additional pellet resuspension buffer will ensure your specimen is within the ideal pH range for automated detection systems, traditional culture, and molecular diagnostics. Make sure you only add enough resuspension buffer to accommodate the diagnostic procedures you will be performing. Doing so will ensure the highest organism concentration. At this point in time, you should also inoculate a sterility plate so you can rapidly monitor any contamination that might be present. After inoculating all other AFB media, add any remaining pellet resuspension to the specimen pellet and save it at refrigeration temperatures so it is available for any follow-up procedures. By strictly following the protocol shown here using AlphaTex Systems reagents, you will ensure that your mycobacteria diagnostics will have the greatest accuracy with the least contamination possible. In order to achieve specimen consistency and avoid instrument error, it is important to ensure that sterile body fluids are at the required pH. Just like sputum, 
Sterile specimens with slight variations in pH can create false positive results in automated detection equipment. Even slightly acidic or basic samples like this can generate erroneous results. Centrifuge the sterile specimen liquids at 3000 Xg for at least 15 minutes in order to sediment any mycobacteria that may be present in the sample. Working in the biosafety hood, carefully remove all of the supernatant and discard it into an appropriate container holding a proper disinfectant. Be careful not to contaminate the specimens or disturb the pellet. Proceed with adding 3 milliliters of the pellet resuspension buffer to the specimen pellet and inoculating all slides, media, and bottles as described for respiratory specimens. There are many other types of specimens submitted for AFB processing which require different procedures. Stool and gastric aspirates, as well as processing specimens contaminated with Pseudomonas species, all require specialized procedures for recovering mycobacteria. Please refer to the attached literature provided in this training manual for directions on processing these types of specimens. Every case of tuberculosis is a critical public health hazard, and it must be ensured that each patient's sample is processed as rapidly and effectively as possible. Optimizing your specimen preparation process, although often overlooked, can be a source of significant improvements in diagnostic sensitivity. Correctly using AlphaTex Systems reagents will ensure that processed specimens contain the maximum amount of any mycobacteria that were originally present and that sample characteristics are ideal for all diagnostic procedures. Thank you for taking the time to watch this training module. We encourage you to contact AlphaTech Systems Incorporated with any comments or questions you may have.